Well, in, 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 well, let's look at the work of Charles Finch, Francis Press Wilson, Dr. Richard King, um, Dr. Carol Barnes. But more than that, let's go to biology and let's go to science. And let's look at the human organism. And, and let's look at the role that the sun plays in the lives of the human organism. And let's look at an organism that is born in a very hot climate by Glossier's law. Glossier's law says for, for an entity to be able to survive as organic life, it has to be born in a warm and temperate zone. In this warm and temperate zone, the human family born in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania is born, it nurtures itself, it educates itself. It, be, it, it begins to eat better. When it eat better, it think better. When it think better, it eat better. But in its reproduction, it, it reproduces itself in such numbers that now it's too crowded. So the human family starts to move. They move north, they move south, they move northwest, they move over into Eurasia, into Asia. Dr. Sheikh Diaw, Civilizational Barbarism Part 1, talks about the development of the, the African that moves out of Africa into Europe and then moves into north of the 51st parallel, which literally would cut Ireland in half, it cuts England in half, it goes across uh, Germany, Holland, straight across Asia. When you look at a map, there's a mountain that goes from one side to the other side that is almost like a, a polar cap that locks anyone in the 51st parallel in. There are four ice ages. There's the Gunsai Age, Mindel, Riss, and Worm. We don't worry about the first three, according to Dr. Diaz. We only work, worry about the last one, because that's when the human family had moved and migrated into this part of the world. Ice Age hit. Temperatures dipped down into 800 degrees below zero, mm. sometimes 400 degrees below zero, and it lasts for generations, for thousands of years. There were generations of, of Africans that never saw the sun. It was only a mythological figure. It, 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 it was at its best what it looks like on a cloudy day. This African, being born in this area, goes into caves and puts on clothes because it's cold, just like we do right now. When it's summertime, in about three months, we're going to be out here and we're going to have tank top and shorts and everything else. Right now, we got all this on. The African finds himself in this cold region. It's extremely cold. In your skin, in your epidermis, you have five layers. You, you have what's called the stratum corneum, the stratum luciderm, the stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and the stratum basale. In the bottom two uh, layers, the basale and the spinosum, you have a biochemical known as 7-dehydrocholesterol. It sits in that epidermis, those parts of your epidermis. When the sun hits your skin, the light and heat energy is absorbed by this dark matter. It converts inactive D1, D2 into active D3. That is what is then shot throughout the entire organic body, and that's what begins to absorb calcium to bring the necessary things into existence for this human body to live. This dark complexion in the warm sunlight is natural suntan lotion. But in the cold, it stops the sunlight from getting in. So this human organism, black of skin, dark brown of skin, begins to depigment itself. Dr. Richard King says it takes 16 generations for a black person to become pale. So over all these years, this African now, in order to be able to derive the sunlight, begins to depigment itself. There, there is in your hair, in all, in all of your hair follicles, there's a sebaceous gland. In the sebaceous gland, there is an oil known as the sebum. The sebum is released, the little packets that, are, that explode in your skin, and it sends an oil up through your body. And in the scalp, in the heat, it protects the, the head from the harmful rays of the sun. Otherwise, you get scalp cancer. In Australia, in Melanesia, but all across the globe. Children can be brought out looking like many different types, because that DNA structure deep within can always produce what's called the archetype. The archetype is the African. The African produced every form of human being on the planet, but no other form of human being can produce an African. Now, I'm saying, hold on, it's hold a good on. explanation of what you're talking about. Yeah. You see, it. see, my thing is, yeah. is, is to deal with science. Get out of the emotional thing. The what, science is exact. And, 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 it can and you can follow it back into, you know, what, what will be actually called, when you're looking at something, you can follow it so that it makes sense. When you get emotional, you begin to bring elements into the discussion 
that become opinion and then opinions can be proven wrong and then normally when an opinion is proven wrong then someone's gonna say everything you say is wrong but if you say science if you stay scientific if if you look at the depigmentation process and just look at us the complexion that we are right now is not what we're gonna look like in August and we're gonna get dark no matter how dark you are you're gonna get darker in the presence of the Sun as you begin to go into the colder climate, you're going to lose that suntan. Now imagine this African entity over thousands of years never having warmth of the sunlight. So it's a constant depigmentation process that is going to create what, what is called in science the Cro-Magnon. But that's not the Eurasian we see today. The Eurasian we see today is after these Eurasians left the northern climate after the warm, warm glaciation ended and they began to come back across to the southern lands they came back not only with a depigmented skin they came back with what's known as a calcified pineal gland calcified pineal gland a healthy pineal gland looked like a grape a calcified pineal gland looked like a raisin okay a raisin is all of the liquids sucked out of the uh, the grape that's why it's called sun dry okay it came back with a warp mentality that's the like the raisin yeah. And yes, and they come back with this concept, right? And so what they do is they forbid themselves to ever mate with the archetype. The first thing all of them should have done was found the biggest, blackest person to mate with in order to return back to the archetype. But what they did is they created xenophobic laws that forbid them. So they only mated with each other. So that the Eurasian we know today is not a mutation. It is a mutation of a mutation. Okay, now let me ask you this. According to Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Blessings on that. Khaled Muhammad teaches that climate does not change the pigmentation of the skin. You see what I'm saying? So what I hear from you is saying that at one time the white man was black. He was an African. Yes. Until he went up into the cold climates and his pigmentation started to change. Yes. There, so there if is. that's true, yes. then that means the Honorable Elijah Muhammad story is incorrect. Well, I'd rather go back to what science shows. Okay. And I'd like to ask us to observe us when it's cold, look at our complexion. Mm -hmm. Observe us when it's very warm, look at the complexion. And if you find that you depigment yourself, it's not about someone's revelation, it's about science. And, and with due respect to all that have come before us, I'm sure the generations that follow me, like this young brother's generation, they'll get the story better than me. This is a process of becoming. We're, we're all trying to make this happen. Okay. I tell folk, don't believe a word I say. You don't have to, because I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just trying to get you out the box to make you start thinking outside of what this system has forced you to think. Because if you if you live in the box and think in the box, all of your options have to come from your choices in the box. Once you step out the box, your choices, not even the sky is the limit. Because outside the box, you can see things that are not in the box. And I'm saying that... You know, it's, it's not about making you believe me. It's just about giving you information and asking you, if you're interested in it, look at it a little closer. Give you that spark. Check it out, yeah. Now, yeah. So you spark know, the thought. I got to bring the questions to you. Like I this. got you. Now, check this out. If the white man <laughs> at one time was African, yes. do you see him as our brother? Is he African today? Yes, he is. Well, he's no. Be no, but he's beyond it. Yes. You know, he's beyond our African. There's only one race on the planet. That's the black the human race. race. The, the human race. The human race. And because of biological climatology, this race was born in a warm, temperate climate. If geographically speaking, the warmest part of the planet had been China, black folk would be from China. Geographically speaking. Mm -hmm. We are children of the sun. It makes no difference where you are geographically. And, and we have to get over, I know that we're upset with how they've treated us. And I know we'd like to say things about them that are flip and cute and angry at them, but we gotta get rid of that emotion because when we free ourselves from that emotion, we can free ourselves. If you put in the hands of an alien being or someone who means you harm, if you give him the responsibility for having put you in this position, you also give him the power to keep you in the position. Once you assume responsibility for where you are. See, cause my thing is, it's, it's not even about who put me, I know who put me here. I know who put me here. I understand who put me here. So my discussion isn't constantly blaming. Look, man, someone throw you in the pit. You can spend the rest of your life arguing about who threw you in the pit, but you're still in the pit, man. Get the hell up out the pit. But well, here's the thing, brother, um, professor. 
Coleman. How can we say we can move on? And I know you ain't say move on when he's still doing it right now. He still can. No, I don't us. think he's doing it. He still. You there, don't think he's still doing it? No, we doing it. Oh man, he's still controlling right now to this very day. Well, he controlling only he's only controlling the physical world. He control our resources, he control the resources coming out of Africa. Only because we're That's allowing it to a, occur until we step up. And this is what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was teaching us. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad and, and Marcus Garvey showed us what we could do. He showed us what we could do. Okay, he showed us you know when, when the Marcus Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey developed the UNIA. And when uh, the, the others formed those organizations, like, like the, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who bought those farms down south and was able to raise his own fish and raise his own animals and have his own markets and have the steak and take that was around the corner, he showed us we could do it. The question was, where were we stepping up to give that brother the kind of support? Whether we were Muslim or not, I, I did not practice what would be considered Islam. But I certainly had a great respect and love for Noble Drew Ali and for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and for Malcolm X. I didn't necessarily, you know, I was born Christian, but I have the utmost respect for what Martin Luther King did and all the other folks. I don't get into folks' religion because I believe that it's the content of your character that we're going to have to start to judge. And, and with this, you know, you, with this Eurasian person, we have to get over it. Because for as long as we stay in it, as long as we're focused on what he or she is doing to us, we will never be able to do what we should do for ourselves.